All right, hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here. It is the Earthmaster on this Wednesday night, about 11.37 p.m. here, California time, March 20th, 2024. The latest activity looks like uh, 2.6 around the Puerto Rico area and the red flag. Also, uh, a little bit of movement. Uh, looks like off the coast of Japan as well. We'll check that out here in just a second. 3.7 out in the Mediterranean region as well. Uh, real quick, looking at uh, the continued activity there around Iceland. Still getting quite a bit of fountaining going on here, as you can see, listed up on the uh, webcam here. Get rid of that mouse pad here. I don't know what's going on here, but this mouse pad's not doing too good. Uh, so yeah, this ongoing eruption here, and uh, it's been like that for, what, six days now? No sign of it slowing down. I haven't really seen any major pause. Uh, so this is just an ongoing event, uh, and it's possible this thing could go on and on and on as long as you're uh, still getting a supply of magma from below. And uh, it's definitely different than the last couple eruptions for sure. Um, let's see here, stand by for a second. I'm going to pull up the latest information here from the folks at the Icelandic Met office here. See if there's anything new going on. Uh, this update looks like that was put out earlier this afternoon. Uh, talking about uh, just how the eruption has been relatively stable. Uh, with little or no movement in the lava flow front. So this is pretty much just stacking on top of each other. And um, really nothing new to report in terms of any type of uh, you know, major change. Let me uh, key this up here real quick. Sometimes this site has a little bit more recent information. This is still from uh, earlier today, so really not seeing anything major going on. Uh, either way, they are talking about how uh, the activity is um, continuing here from the Sabart Singhi Reservoir area. Uh, so instead of uh, accumulating there in that reservoir, you know, as far as like building up uh, magma inflation, all that's going on there is it's just coming up towards the Sabart Singhi area and then uh, heading off there towards where the current eruptive activity is taking place. So we just have a free flow of magma coming up to the surface right now. So something like this could go on and on and on for a little bit. Uh, again, this is day six. We'll have to watch that. As they mentioned, no major advancement in the lava field, the lava flow field for now. As far as any uh, major changes in earthquake activity, let's see what we got. Really haven't seen anything out there uh, across the area of the Grindavik region. Just a free flow of magma. As far as, uh, let's check out the GPS stations out here across the Grindavik area. See if anything has changed. Of course, there's going to be, um, you know, some noticeable deflation going on. And you can see that taking place right here. It was going up. And um, since that eruption started, obviously, we, we've seen a drop here in the inflation. But uh, we're still kind of going up. Even with, uh, if you look at these last three runs here, they're all kind of stair-stepping. Uh, each higher with each higher event there, so we're still looking at uh, potential inflation going on while we're seeing the elevated activity out here. So it's pretty crazy. Um, definitely kind of curious to see how long this will continue, right? I mean, as long as there's plenty of magma flowing from below, the deeper areas below, that will uh, continue for quite some time. Really, not seeing a whole lot of. Uh, Activity out in the Iceland area for now in terms of earthquake activity. Uh, nothing major going on there across the uh, divergent zones for now. I don't know what's going on here. I've been having some wacky stuff going on with the uh, with my electronics recently. And my mouse is uh, one of them. I want to zoom in and it wants to take me out. So I'm not for sure what's going on here. But uh, let's take a look at earthquake activity out here. Southern California looking fairly active here in the last 24 hours. With a couple of different little areas of watching here outside the El Centro area, we've seen a 2.3 and a couple other smaller quakes there. 
Uh, also getting some activity further up north, right along the area of the northern edge of the San Jacinto Fault Zone. Looks like a 2.0 coming in there. Handful of smaller quakes here off along the San Bernardino Mountain Range as well. And uh, Ridgecrest area and around the Lake Isabella area still seeing some movement. So uh, definitely showing some signs of elevated activity out here today in Southern California. I think the West Coast in general got some movement up along the creeping segment and into the Calaveras Fault Zone towards the Bay Area. Mostly smaller microquake activity out there, but it is noticeably increasing. Uh, some slight movement across the Mount Rainier area, nothing major going on. Really not seeing any uh, major activity to chat about for now. Texas area still seeing some movement, including, uh, looks like around the border here, New Mexico and Texas, 2.3. Uh, I believe there's some oil fields out there in that region, if I'm correct. Yeah, there's quite a bit out here, actually. Quite a bit of oil fields. So, all right, let's continue on here. Not a whole lot through the eastern portion of the country. Quick glance here at Yellowstone National Park. It shows um, some wind conditions earlier. It's going to be these darker uh, graph readings there. But aside from that, um, fairly minimal earthquake activity. Not for sure what that was earlier, but it kind of matched up with the uh, some wind events that came in. It just lasted for about five or six hours and then disappeared. There's a little bit of earthquake activity right there, it looks like. Uh, two little spikes or so on that seismograph station. But really nothing major going on uh, across this area for now. A look at the rest of the world here. Got a 4.1 coming into the Greece area just within the last... Oh, 20 minutes or so, 25 minutes outside of Crete. Right along the plate boundary, it looks like, about 41 kilometers deep. And uh, some movement out there in India as well. This looks like a 4.6 coming in this afternoon around that uh, specific area. Uh, further out here, across the area of the plate boundary, Kermadec Trench seeing some movement uh, with a 5.3, fairly deep into this area. About 432 kilometers deep for that quake. And as we uh, look at the earthquake 3D globe here, let's see if we've got anything uh, going on in the New Zealand area. Mostly older quakes there from this morning. Couple three stirring up there. Doesn't look like any newer activity. The newer events taking place here around the Guinea area and up along the coast of Japan. What is going on here? <laughs> Just so annoying. Oh, goodness. All right, so, yeah, a little, little earthquake uh, underneath the Tokyo area, about 48 kilometers deep. They're, you know, they're used to these five-pointers and six-pointers. Uh, but this one being a 5.2 earlier uh, this evening, it looks like. Nothing major, just uh, a little bit of uh, movement. Keep people on their toes out there. But Tokyo area is definitely well-developed uh, and prepared for big earthquakes. They're... Uh, infrastructure can definitely handle the big ones. Out in the Pacific, a couple twos and even a three out there around the Hawaii area. Let's see what's going on here. Um, looks like most of that movement out around the Pahala area. It's minimal activity here across the western region of the Big Island. Um, let's see what we got. Looks like most of that's going to be some deeper activity out here. Uh, but it doesn't look like any major changes there across the uh, Hawaii area in terms of volcanic activity. Been kind of watching the Kilauea volcano, right, with the inflation and then that uh, deflation event here a month or so ago. As uh, far as the deep information data out here, let's go ahead and check this out real quick, see what's going on. A little, little elevated activity, but that's not even really that big of an event. Here's the uh, past week or so, a little deflation event followed up by a rapid inflation. Well, this is just an ongoing trend, it looks like here. Um, again, no major, no major noticeable changes out there for now across the area. Uh, South America region, seen a handful of earthquakes out there, including a four-pointer, it looks like, this morning. But I did notice some earthquake activity out there here on the globe. Looks like a 3.5. And um, that 5.2, if I remember right, is a, isn't this one a fairly new earthquake? It is. 
We did have some earthquake activity down here. I think it was yesterday. Let's see. Let's pull this up here. Yeah, yesterday they had a deeper quake uh, further up north, 118 kilometers deep for that 5.6. A little bit of adjustment going on southward now. Continue to watch that. Uh, Puerto Rico area looks like a typical day out there. Really not seeing any major unusual activity. No major swarming going on there for now. That one earthquake way up north again here. Definitely something brewing up here, it seems like. I wonder if that has something to do with the uh, uh, the continued activity we're seeing there across Iceland. We've been noticing uh, quite a few threes and whatnot, specifically up at the top here of the, of the globe. And uh, that could be having an effect there with the uh, further influx of magma from the deeper regions. Definitely have to keep an eye on that. Oh, man, I'm going to... This mouse, goodness. <laughs> All right. Let's see what else is going on here. Space weather. Maybe space weather is messing with this thing. Um, earlier today, we did have uh, a M7.4 event. Now, that's a pretty strong uh, flare. Although that was at uh, 0850 UTC time, so that would put it at um, technically yesterday around this time. Uh, we did see another M flare, though. It's a smaller one, little M... Looks like an M2.0, uh, but that's a decent flare. I don't think that was um, eruptive in nature. Uh, looks fairly like an impulsive event, really rapid X or uh, M flare. But uh, we'll have to keep an eye on that. See if there's any CME data heading this way. Uh, now tonight we are expecting, they were forecasting anyway, a G1 class storm. Potential for auroras up there across the higher latitudes. It looks like it may be coming in right now uh, with a little bit of KP index there spiking up. Nothing big, but a uh, little percentage of the auroras kicking up there at the higher latitudes. Really not expecting much, though, uh, from that uh, forecasted event. I think it's going to miss us. All right, we do have uh, quite a few, quite a few sunspots here. I seen this sunspot on my uh, camera earlier when I was doing that live stream uh, for the total eclipse test. Didn't quite see this one, um, but I'm sure it was there. Either way, these uh, uh, these sunspots are looking fairly dynamic in nature. And 3615 here, uh, which is going to be this area right here, needs some watching. Definitely getting quite complex here. There's quite a bit of individual cores here, and it looks like it's rapidly growing. And, of course, in this type of stage here, uh, as it's turning into the Earth-directed view, anything that will blast off here will be uh, uh, geo-effective in terms of CME activity. Now, that's where that uh, M7.4 came from, uh, 3615, yesterday. But, um, again, that wasn't uh, eruptive in nature in, in terms of a CME producer. Uh, but we do have uh, definitely some sunspots here to watch as they're uh, rotating further into the Earth-directed view. It does look uh, possible we could see some stronger flaring here. That's pretty crazy looking. Uh, and that's basically the main one to watch. The majority of these look like they're capable of producing some C, maybe some M flare activity as well across this region. These are growing like crazy across the western limb now that they're getting out of sight, out of line, but uh, shouldn't harbor too much of a potential uh, threat to Earth with that being uh, over on the western limb. Overall threat right now, 99% chance for a C, uh, C flare, M flare at 45, X flare around 10% chance or so. Really not seeing um, Aside from this little forecast here, anything major in terms of the auroras for now. Uh, there is a little coronal hole, number 12, that is facing us. And that could potentially amplify conditions here in the coming days. We'll have to watch that and see what the uh, folks there at the uh, Space Weather Prediction Center have to say about it. Let's see if there's anything in the forecast here for now. This is going to show the forecast for the potential auroras tonight. And this is that little CME that was produced there days ago. Notice here Earth in the green dot. 
just barely getting a glancing blow, and I don't think it's going to uh, do much here. Um, but uh, we'll wait for the further updates here in the coming days, see if we get anything else in the forecast. All right, Storm Prediction Center, not a whole lot of severe weather out here for now. Uh, we do have a, uh, a storm coming in here across the West Coast, California region. Let's bring up the western states here. Uh, looks like as we head into Friday and the Saturday, a pretty decent low pressure system out here. Not really tapping into any substantial moisture, but there is a little bit of rain coming in with it and some snow at higher elevations. That is going to um, kind of circulate down here across the entire state of California. And then after that, looks like a couple more storm systems set to come in. That one's a pretty decent one. <coughs> So we'll have to watch this. It does look like we're going to finish off March quite wet. And uh, maybe another one coming in for Southern Cal as we head into April. Now look at the time frame here. April 6th, two days after this, is the eclipse. So we have to watch what goes on out here and also across the rest of the country here. If we're going to, you know, kind of look at the forecast for... Um, clarity uh, for the total eclipse. Now we can check, um, let's check this out here real quick. This is April 6th here. Sometimes they go out a little bit further, uh, but it doesn't look like it. So we'll have to wait a couple more. Yeah, this one would have, but it hasn't loaded yet. So these are um, pending. But we'll have to keep an eye on that. I'm ready for the eclipse and uh, you guys didn't get a chance to see my test. Go check it out. It is on the uh, channel as far as the live video goes. I think it was uh, okay. Got some good feedback on it. Went and watched it myself. Pretty good quality audio and the uh, video wasn't bad as well. But I will be out there in Texas come April 8th to uh, live stream the Total Eclipse. So I'm, I'm pretty excited. Can't wait. Alright guys, I'm out of here. Have yourself a good night. Uh, I think I better double check these batteries here. Maybe that's what's going on. I do use this mouse a lot, so that's probably why it's starting to act a little funny. We'll catch you guys back out here tomorrow for the Thursday morning update. Take care, folks.